Hello everyone, um, that was uh, another tough game here for our Cincinnati Bengals. Once again, um, they fall, uh, now falling to a, uh, a, a solid uh, losing season uh, based off their 34-7 to loss on the road at U.S. Bank Stadium in, uh, in Minneapolis. Bengals never really had a chance in this game. Um, since the word came out this morning that Marvin Lewis, according to Adam Schefter's report, uh, that Marvin Lewis was going to be stepping down at the end of the year. Something I personally thought would happen, um, but it was, you know, the, the report came out and the Bengals, they looked like they, you know, they were never in this game. Uh, they were flat last week against the Bears and it showed because they got whooped 33-6. Uh, um, you know, the last two straight weeks where they've, they've come out and, and not played well at all, not even sharp. Uh, you know, since coming off their loss uh, to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, and this game, the Bengals had 161 total net yards on offense compared to 346 for the Vikings. It just wasn't even a close game. Uh, this was just one day, if you watched, it was just not, I mean, just wasn't good at all. Plain and simple. Andy Dalton, 11 to 22. So he's 50%, but 113 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions. A.J. McCarron came in. Uh, he was 3-for-6, so 50% as well uh, for 19 yards. He did lead a touchdown drive in the fourth quarter. I mean, I guess there's probably going to be a quarterback controversy now based off of that. I can hear it now. But it's this was just a just a rough game overall uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals. Like I said, it just wasn't, wasn't good, wasn't pretty. Uh, again, it looked like a team that, Kind of quit is kind of the best way to. Uh, they looks like they've completely quit on the season. Um, it's just, you know, you start off the, you know, the Vikings, you know, start off the the game, go, uh, you know, a nine play, seventy five yard drive uh, with Tavius Murray, you know, you know, scoring from one yard out, give him a, a seven nothing lead. Um, then it was a, a nice pick six by Andy Dalton. You know, that just, you know, that kind of just seemed to. You could feel that they just couldn't get anything going on early on, and that's you know that's just kind of what you know what it looked like, and that's how it was. Couldn't get anything going offensively, and it just you know again it just seemed to to snowball. Uh, defensively, they didn't look very good. Uh, this just overall was a just a bad game. Um, it's just it's it's not going to be getting any better right now. Uh, the rest of the season. Let's face it, folks. This is this is a five and eleven football team um, coming into the season. Uh, you know, in one of my preview podcasts, I, I said they were either going to be a twelve and four team or a four and twelve team. I like I said, and I've said it in in previous you know previous videos. I thought they were going to be more along the lines of a twelve and four team. I thought they had all the offensive talent. Um, I thought they would be able to overcome. The, the bad offensive line, that hasn't happened. Andy Dalton, has he's played well this year. Uh, he wasn't very good th uh, today. Um, but again, this was just a game. And, and for people to, to crap on, um, you know, I, I think to crap on Andy Dalton this year, I think it's pretty tough. Yeah, I'm not saying he's been lights out, because he hasn't. Uh, he, he hasn't played his best, but... Uh, in a game like today where it's just, you know, it's just you to where, you know, they've got the, you know, the, the team basically just kind of quit. Uh, it's tough. Yeah, this is a tough, uh, tough situation to be in, especially for, you know, for everyone in the organization. Uh, like I said, it, since the word came out this morning that Marvin was going to step down, which another report that he's denying. That's typical Marvin Lewis. Uh, I'm gonna trust the national guys, as you know, as it, you know, as we all know, uh, coaches aren't gonna be talking to the the local guys and, and kind of leaking the stuff out. It's not how that works. They'll talk to the national guys, especially Adam Schefter. The guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he's definitely uh, he's definitely got a solid track record. So again, I'm gonna trust. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna trust. <laughs> I'm going to trust Adam Schefter's report over what Marvin Lewis says because, you know, Marvin Lewis, you know, some of the things that have come out of his mouth just make you shake your head. And it's, you know, this is just another situation of that. Uh, again, it's just, it's tough. You know, for a 5-9 and nine season, 
Uh, definitely looking ahead. You're going to look at now a five and eleven season because there's no way this team is going to come out and knock off the Lions next week on Christmas Eve, and then come back the following week on New Year's Eve and and, and knock off the uh, the Ravens on the road. It's just not happening. This team is uh, they're done. I, you know, there's no other way to put it. Uh, this team is they're they flatlined. Uh, and even coming out in so-called playing for pride is not, that's, we're not seeing that either. Um, like I said, you know, Gio Bernard, 14 rushes. He had 30 yards today. He did have the touchdown. Um, you know, Hill contributed with 12, Josh Malone with four. Um, it's just different situations where if you watch, you know, there was, you know, early on, I believe it was in the second quarter when the Bengals went forward on fourth and one. And didn't get it. You know, you run four straight, you know, four straight running plays and can't get anything. It's just, I thought things were going to change with the hiring of, of Bill Lazor to, you know, to, to the offensive coordinator. He, he was going to be calling the plays. I thought things were going to change. We didn't see much. Um, you know, it, it's just this, they just have not done a good job of getting getting guys involved, getting their skilled guys involved like they should. Um, and like I said, last week, you know, last week you've had a lot of the injuries. A lot of the guys have not played. Um, same situation with, you know, the offense. You know, you haven't had a healthy Joe Mixon for a couple weeks. Um, and that makes a big difference. And um, But it's amazing how how the, the script has been flipped after the, the loss to Pittsburgh on Monday Night Football. Again, like I said, a typical a typical loss, a typical Marvin Lewis Bengals loss, to where he uh, again fails to make some adjustments, you know, so on and so forth, and the Bengals come out and lose um, after you know after the second half. You know, they could be it, it never fails. It just it seems that they just continue to uh, um, to to move forward with that same mentality and. Until that changes, uh, which I honestly I think this year's I think this is the year that's going to change it. Um, there's been a lot of talk that, uh, like I said, it, and from what I've heard, the Bengals were caught blindsided by this report. Uh, the assistant coaches were never notified of of Marvin's decision. Um, let's face it, Martin Lewis is still here as a coach, so that's not you know that's not changing or anything like that right now. But it's the the fact that, you know, he didn't notify his his assistants or anything like that. That's something I think that, you know, it should be done. I, I think you need to to notify your guys and, and tell them, you know, your plans, if, especially if this is going to come out. Uh, and they never did. So I, I've heard that there's a lot of – there's going to be a lot of turnover in the, in the, in the team, uh, in the coaching staff, just because of, apparently from what I've heard, like I said – um, there's been some assistants who are not happy with the front office. And with that being the case, you know, you're going to have um, some guys who are looking to leave the organization. Now, there was also a report that Hugh Jackson could be coming down from Cleveland. That's one I I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I think Hugh Jackson is a much better coordinator than he is a head coach. I think if you're going to bring Hugh Jackson in, he's got to be the coordinator. Um, the only one right now, I I... I think that you have to hire outside of the organization at this point in time. I don't think things are going to change if Paul Gunther gets it uh, or Darren Simmons gets it. Uh, that's I just I don't see that happening. And I think bringing in a guy like um, Mike Zimmer, like I mean I, I love Zim, and I think bringing in a guy like Mike Zimmer would do would be the just what the doctor ordered, and I think that that could. You know, I'd be curious to see what happens with that. Um, you know, Matt Patricia of New England is another name. Josh McDaniels is another name. There's going to be a lot of head coaches, um, you know, or a lot of spots that are going to be open for some, you know, for some new head coaches. That's just how it is. You know, it's obviously, you know, with Black Monday, you know, right after, you know, the season, a lot of guys get canned. That's what you're going to see here. It's not going to be a... A firing. It was Paul Danner Jr. I think he had a great tweet. Said this was never going to be a firing, uh, but it was going to be a mutual decision to step down. Um, basically, a mutual decision to part ways is kind of what it is. It's you know they were never going to fire Marvin Lewis. That's just not how this Bengals organization works. It's not how Mike Brown operates. 
but seeing people crap on Mike Brown saying, you know, the, oh, it's going to be great, who they're going to hire and everything. No, Mike Brown was the one that brought in Marvin Lewis. And, you know, the, the decision was between Tom Coughlin and Marvin Lewis. And that right there, you know, I don't care what anyone says, you know, okay, continue to crap on Mike Brown. I don't get it. Um, you know, yeah, this has not ended the way we all thought it would uh, after 15 years. But we got to be thankful for what we've had. Like I said, Marvin Lewis has done a fantastic job with this organization. He's done a great job with this team. Uh, he brought them uh, to it, you know, he brought them from an embarrassing position. This was a tweet I, I did retweet. And um, he brought them from an, uh, from the the embarrassing basement of the NFL where the Bengals were the laughing stock, and rightfully so. They were a joke for a long, long time. Um, Marvin brought him out of that. And, you know, you you get him back, you know, back to national prominence where the Bengals were. Um, granted, it never worked out. You know, they didn't have any playoff victories, but they got him there. Um, and... Granted, it was not. It was it wasn't acceptable that that's all we got was getting to the playoffs. I wanted more, especially with the team that we had, the talent that we had. We needed more. Um, I thought the first game was a pass, you know, the the Carson Palmer injury. But if you remember, that was a game Bengals should have won. They were still winning at that point in time. Again, another game where the Pittsburgh Steelers made adjustments at halftime. And John Kitten, unfortunately, and the rest of that team just couldn't get uh, couldn't get the the victory in that one. Um, a San Diego Chargers game was another one that was ugly. Um, but again, a lot of people are going to blame Andy Dalton in that one. That was an entire team effort to where they looked bad. Uh, you had the whole breakdown. Well, the Jets game, uh, that playoff game, that was ugly. The two Texans games, those were ugly. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the, we all know what happened there. That was. To me, the Pittsburgh game is all on Marvin Lewis and, and, and having his guys not mentally prepared for that game. Uh, that's another thing that Marvin has been uh, criti rightly criticized for, not getting his guys ready for crucial games um, under the big lights. You know, under not the big lights, but the bright lights. Um, but he's never been able to get, you know, to seemingly get his guys ready for those kind of games. And that's going to be his, you know, that's going to be part of his legacy here in Cincinnati is the fact that he never got his his team ready uh, to perform in primetime. Unfortunately, when the uh, when the bright lights of the NFL playoffs and, and, and ESPN Monday Night Football and Thursday Night Football and all that stuff, and you're 2-18, and 18, I believe, is what it is under in the last, uh, like, 10 plus years or something like that, that that's that's unacceptable. Um, that's not what this team is like. Uh, we've got talent on this team. I don't care what anyone says. You've got you've got a, a great quarterback in Andy Dalton. Granted, he's not one of the he's not one of the NFL elite, but he's not a quarterback that's gonna lose you games. You've got him uh, leading your team. You've got Giovanni Bernard, you've got Joe Mixon, uh, Brennan, you got Brandon LaFell, who's been a fantastic uh, free agent signing. Uh, he contributed today with um, 53 uh, receiving yards on two receptions. His longest was 45 yards today. You got A.J. Green, who is one of the best receivers in the game, hands down. Uh, you got Alex Erickson, who's a you know he's a he's a solid um, he's a solid serviceable you know kick returner, punt returner, and you know he gets a job done at wide receiver as well. Um, defensively, I mean, you've got Vontez Burford, you've got Geno Atkins, Carlos Dunlop. Uh, William Jackson the third. You've got a lot of talent on this team, and this team should not be five and nine, which will soon be five and eleven. Because, like I said, this team may not score a, a touchdown the rest of the year, and that's no joke. They fell into that touchdown um, today. I mean, it's just you know, it, it's it's rough. It's a really rough um, rough season so far. Um, but you know, again, that's part of it. And it's sadly going to be the 50th anniversary of this franchise. And you're going to see, you know, right after that, a, a coaching change. And hopefully Mike Brown and, and Katie Blackburn and, uh, you know, the rest of the, the Bengals front office, they make the right decision to bring in a guy who will be able to um, to motivate this team and, and jump their ass if they need. Because that's what, that's what needs to happen, some of these guys. 
that's one thing that I, I think with um, with Mike Zimmer, he wasn't afraid to jump his to jump his guys, and he, he got a lot of respect for that. Players loved him, and that's just the way it was, you know, for uh, you know for Zimmer and his entire time here. And I guarantee that's how it is in Minnesota right now as well. So again, this is a tough, tough year uh, for us. Uh, only got two two videos left. Uh, post game videos left. I, I don't know when I'll be able to get the the one out for Christmas Eve next week against the Lions. I'm just going to kind of preface it now. It's not going to be a good one because they're going to get smoked. Um, going into it, you know, if you look at uh, if if you thought this team was flat those last two weeks, I got a feeling it's going to be a lot lot flatter on Christmas Eve against the Lions than what they have been in the past. Uh, simply because of the news that's come out with the whole Marvin thing. It's just again, just not a good, not a good situation here in Cincinnati. Um, but overall, uh, the Minnesota Vikings today uh, moved on to eleven and three, clinched the uh, the NFC North under great performance by Case Keenum. He was twenty to twenty three for three or two hundred and thirty six yards. He did have two touchdowns. Uh, it was great to see Teddy Bridgewater came in uh, late in the game. Great to see that he was zero for two though. He did have an interception on, on the tip pass. Uh, Murray. Um, Latavius Murray, 20 uh, rushes for 76 yards. He did have a touchdown. His longest was 14. Jarek McKinnon, uh, 24 yards. Case Keenum uh, added another 20 on the ground as well. Um, Stephen Diggs, uh, 7 yards. But then McKinnon, uh, he was a huge, uh, huge out of the backfield. He had 7 receptions for 114 yards. Uh, you know, so... Again, uh, they did the Vikings. You know, they had a lot to play for, and they still do have a lot to play for. And they're, Mike Zimmer's got himself a damn good football team up in Minneapolis because this team, you know, they're they're a good they're a good one, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what you know how the the next two weeks play out. But right now, uh, it's again, it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, how this Bengals team comes out against um, against you know. North opponents, uh, one's the NFC North next week against the Lions, and then following up, finishing up our season on, on New Year's Eve against the uh, Baltimore Ravens, who are still in the playoff hunt. So, uh, again, tough, tough year right now. I, one that I didn't expect to go in this way. But um, that's those are the cards we've been dealt here in Cincinnati, and that's just uh, that's just what we're going to uh, continue to, uh, uh, to get. So we shall see um, how everything plays out. As always, follow me on Twitter at I am Chris Asbrock and uh, the website FieldTheImpactSports.com. Unfortunately, I have been um, work schedule's been crazy. I haven't been able to put anything out uh, recently um, on the site. So um, I, again, I apologize for that. Um, I'm hoping to get a couple podcasts out. Uh, one with um, good old buddy Kyle Phillips, uh, a little FC Cincinnati stuff. So as always, um, check that out. Uh, continue to uh, to go to the, uh, my YouTube page. Uh, that'd be great. As always, your guys' support is uh, it's truly appreciated. I can't thank you guys enough. And um, hope all is well. And hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your holiday. If uh, if I don't if I don't do one of these videos before uh, Christmas, so thank you guys so much as always for your support. And have yourselves a great great rest of your weekend and a great week leading up to Christmas. Thank you. Bye.